Mark so I had this. Uh, so so yeah. So 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 I'm, I'm I want to talk about this um, this thing we did in December, which was called uh, Krampus Hack. Um, the whole idea is: Are you familiar with the concept of a secret Santa? Or in surprise in Dutch. Yeah. Yes. This, uh, the idea of this uh, game jam was to have sort of a secret Santa style game jam, where everybody makes. Um, a game to the particular wish, wishes of another person in the in a circle, um, and so we thought that was fun to do. It was like a sort of a bit of a a freestyle game jam without much like pressure or requirements, but just having fun with it over the holidays. Since we're all stuck at home anyway, um, and so that happened. Uh, it was. Uh, 16 people signed up and in the end only 11 people submitted so that means that there's also some people without uh without gifts or they made a gift for somebody and didn't receive any in return which is a bit sad but that's uh, all what always happens with game jams that uh you know uh, halfway through people life intervenes maybe or maybe they just bought a ps5 and they just couldn't be bothered that happens too uh, anyway <laughs> but for the remaining 11 games i made uh, this uh, video to get an idea, Let's see, I can play it. Can you hear the sound? Yes. So I just, I just put like shorts. I just made short recordings of each game and just put them all together in one on YouTube uh, uh, video. So this is the first one. And uh, so, I believe that this this game was uh, one of the wishes was that there had to be dragons in it. So that, yeah, I think he got off the shelf with graphics. And just made his own game engine. Go through this. This this one is a little bit smaller entry, which is supposed to be some sort of spherical chessboard, but it wasn't really finished. I mean, you can't really play. Can kind of click and attack and you can see the numbers go down but okay <laughs> it's not much of a it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, it doesn't hold the interest for very long let's see this one uh, i thought was was very elaborate it's, it's kind of like a command and conquer style game you can hear the... ready for orders acknowledge ready for you orders play command and conquer or dune or red alert there's also it's also the idea is that these are farmers although i don't know why farmers would be interested in crystals and mushrooms there's farmers and protesters and the, the other party is um, police with uh, gas grenades with uh, tear gas grenades so, See there, there's this police with uh, water cannons and tear gas grenades. I mean, we had them the other day in Eindhoven, so... It's all very realistic. <laughs> text, uh, a good old-fashioned text adventure. Where you have to type commands. Remember those? Go north, go west. Those were the best. How, how much time did people get, Martijn? It was from uh, one, December 13 to... To to thirty one, so Ooh, okay. pretty much the I think it's two and a half weeks, and uh, yeah, I mean the, the, the so I wanted to have it like a very relaxed form, like people can choose themselves how much time to invest. If you have like these really tight weekend game jams, then it's really like a rush, and you have to work really hard, and uh, I don't know that doesn't really fit well with the uh, Christmas don't, period. Don't sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I usually sleep during game jams. Actually, I always sleep during game jams, and I've done quite a few. Um, I don't think it, the result is better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this one too. This one is like an old Nintendo game. It was modeled after an old Nintendo game from um, WarioWare Inc. One of the mini, mini, mini games from WarioWare Inc. But with the Christmas theme. This is this is quite fun to play, and this wasn't done in Allegro. This was done in, in JavaScript. Mm. Or this one. Um, 
yeah, it's, <laughs> it's silent. The, the wish list uh, asked for uh, minimal graphics, which I guess it has, so that's fine. This game looks really pretty, but it's super annoying to play, so... You have to look for a dolphin by... with fish, but there's this annoying penguin that when they see your, your tracks in the snow, they call you out and you have to start over. Or they steal your fish and you have to start over. And so, uh, but it looks pretty, so. <laughs> A, a, a typing game. The it isn't a very good typing game because it has like a, a very, very big delay. Like it has a very low frame rate and very big delay on the keyboard input. So it's like uh, you have to type letters multiple times for it to to register. So you know. Um. It also <laughs> seems uh, to have a particular interest in uh, the devil's lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it was made for somebody who always likes to talk about smoking weed. So, you know, it's, it's personalized. I'll, 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 this is my entry and I'll go more into it in a minute. A simple arcade game. You have to collect the blue, blue balls and avoid the red balls. Very simple, but quite effective actually. No music, unfortunately. I think with music, this would be uh, actually quite a good uh, arcade game for for you know for a game jam mm, the last one is also quite elaborate it's like um, a little bit like like dungeon keeper it's sort of like you have this dungeon on a hexagonal grid for some reason um, where you have monsters and like heroes like elves and wizards and they fight each other uh, but um, you basically have no interest in the outcome of the fight. It's like you just sell your weapons to the, to the, to the heroes. And if the heroes die, then basically it means you just get to sell more weapons to the next hero. It's a very interesting. The end is it's very um, <laughs> it, It's well done, I think. It's a very. I mean, it's it doesn't. It's not terribly intuitive to how to play it, but uh, there's a lot of depth to the game. So yeah. Um, so if you allow me, I want to. I don't know show a little bit more about the the game that I made, and also a little bit more about the the whole game jam and how I organized it. So I've mentioned this that I was the organizer of this game jam, and I've organized a whole bunch of them in the past. So I'm going to show you a bit of that as well. All right. Uh, so I can show you. So okay, this is the. Uh, the website, it's it's called, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's my website. It's called tins.amarillion.org. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more why that is later. Um, I think I have to go to, uh, oh yeah, these are the rules, but I want to show you the list of uh, entries, which is now behind. There you go. No. <laughs> that is, how can I move this? There you go. All right. Um, okay. So 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 yeah. This was this was the entry that I created. Um, and so this was the wish list that I get that I got from Relpap Set or the Stapler. Um, he wanted a monitoring influence game. So a game, it's also like a game that you don't, uh, um, but they sometimes call it a zero player game. Like it's just a game that you can run in the, in the background and maybe occasionally you tweak something like that. And then um, procedural content, that's fine. That's nice actually. Uh, and we'll implement one of, of your own wishes. And so I put, well, my wish list, I put something like, uh, I want to, I love science games. So I want a game based on science. So that's, uh, that's what I made. So um, ExoKeeper, I made ExoKeeper, the, the first one, 
about half a year ago for uh, Ludum Dare. And I, I posted it in the chat back then, so you might have seen it already. Uh, I'm not sure if you recognize it. So I basically remade the whole game uh, in Allegro because the first one was done in JavaScript and added some new features to it. Um, so let me give it a start. Uh, so now I have to move you guys again. Mm, uh, it is now opening in the wrong location on the screen. That is annoying. So, well, okay. Mm, yes, okay. So Game Jam games have bugs in them. I'm not gonna apologize for that. <laughs> so there's two bugs that, that you already saw right now. It has like an out of memory error when you close it and it has like a, uh, an annoying habit to to open right out. So I can't move the window anymore. Right side out of the screen. I'm gonna fix that one. I just want to show the credits first because there was like, a, so the, the one that I did for Ludum there 46, uh, there were some other people helping me out uh, with the graphics and the artwork so none of that is is mine so i just point that out um, so yeah it's 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 a science game basically you arrive at at a foreign planet uh, that is that's cold it's a bit like mars like it's it's frozen there's no life it's desert um, and you have to terraform it so that it becomes like a wonderful paradise and you do that by introducing microbes to, to the world. So you can kind of um, click and you can get some information, like the most important factor is the temperature. So 234 Kelvin, which is like minus 40 degrees. And here you have all kinds of microbe species that you can introduce, like uh, this guy and he says it says here what kind of temperature he likes it's even like this is some more artwork and some more details um yeah so you can look at all the descriptions you can joke at this micro red terminator but this one it has a temperature toler tolerance between 290 and 330 so that is like very warm compared to what the planet is right now so i have to start with like a like one of the earlier ones, this one, this one will grow here, and it likes this green hill, so I can introduce species. So the the original game was you could play like, and it it, it would take five minutes to to basically reach the end state of the game. So that was kind of slow. Uh, I had to slow it down, like in order to make it like a zero player game, you want it to be quite long. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, if you, you if you cannot, basically you want to be able to 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 leave and have a cup of coffee and then later come back to it and see what happened. So um, yeah, that's 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 what I'm. That's what, so I, I really slowed the game down. I, I tweaked the parameters so that um, yeah, it, it really takes at least half an hour before it reaches the end state. It should it should really take more. Like it should take days, I think. But then playtesting becomes a real problem. The, the, the reason to make it the reason to make it so short in the in the first uh, 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 game jam was that you could play test it uh, and so yeah over the, the Christmas holidays I had a little bit more time for that but still it's like if you have to play a game like if you if you tweak a parameter and then have to play half an hour and then tweak a parameter again and then play half an hour that's really slow so time uh, factor can help right but Excuse me. A time multiplier could help, right? Testing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And I, I could, uh, I, yeah. There's all kinds of tricks you can. Yeah, that's a good, good point. So there's, there's, there's all kinds of tricks you can do, and I'll probably do some of them if I ever uh, work on this game some more. Uh, so I can, I can speed it up. I can I build in a debug mode that I can just jump straight to a specific save point or something like that. 
but uh, yeah. So so we'll let this be for a while. I'm I'm just going to so I'm going to let it, this run in the background and show you a little bit of. Um, maybe I'll show you some of the code. So, <laughs> have you guys ever heard of the D programming language? So what's I mean I no. I know Thais, you do C sharp right? Yeah. I know yeah. Thomas does uh, JavaScript mostly. Well, I don't I don't do C sharp. It's just I do Unity I suppose, and it happens to use C sharp something. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not much of a programmer anyway. It's more scripting really. Yeah 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 yeah. So the Lego community is really they're they're all programmers. Starts as programmers and then maybe some art and maybe some music if they have have some rate of skills but the programmers first and so yeah um, so allegro games are usually c plus um, plus yeah just to, to clarify i should mention so 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 originally all these game jams were from the allegro community and allegro used to be compulsory uh, but yeah so since allegro is on the decline in a way don't make it compulsory anymore it's just whatever you want and it's just like it's game jams by the allegro community or whoever wants to join them and many of the people from the allegro community are also moving away from allegro so um, yeah you just have freedom but so anyway i I, have, I was always interested in the deep programming language because it's 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 a better c plus plus but um it's also quite quite old and quite mature by now compared to like i mean there's there's other c plus plus competitors like rust for example but uh, in the go language the very modern but d has been around for quite a while um, and so there's bindings for allegro one thing i like if you but yeah that now I, I i don't think that you are very interested in the details of the program language itself so maybe i should just move on on this, thing, on this bit um so let's yeah, just summarize hmm? i got a question uh, martin i mean i'm also not a super duper programmer myself but can you explain or at least give us some like the, the differences or the pros of this programming language compared to maybe a c plus uh, plus like what can you get uh done um, in a in a uh, shorter amount of time compared to the other one or more optimized or i like, can't can you tell yeah. me about it yeah. yeah it's hard to summarize in in, in, a, in a very short amount of time and it's it's all uh, a little bit subjective uh because i mean it's always when you compare programming languages i think all all, all programming languages that are turing complete and that is uh, all of them uh, can express anything you want. So it's like you can always achieve it with any programming language you, you want. So you can never point to one thing that says like, okay, that is something that you could never do in that programming language. It's simply not true. You can do everything with every programming language. Uh, but what makes D stand out from uh, C++ for me is that it has uh, a lot of things built in that were bolted on in C++, but it still provides the, the performance and uh, like the system level uh, that C++ has. And so one of the things that were bolted on in C++ is like garbage collection, which you can do, but it's it's very, like C++ looks down on, uh, on garbage collection. So they're like, um, yeah, we, people, have been pestering us to add garbage collection, so we did, but we don't really like it. And uh, in D, it's just in the language, so you don't have, and it's automatic memory management, which is uh, a great, uh, yeah, productivity boost. I mean, most of you use scripting languages that have this built in, so you can't even imagine what it's like if you don't have it. But C++ by default doesn't have it, and it's like, yeah, it's a very different, different level. Um, yeah, the other thing that's nice if you if you go in a little bit more into the language details, like for example the the template programming. So you can say, look, can you have like very strongly typed types? I opened this one as an example. It's uh, I created a vector type. So a vector is simply to store two, three, or four 
numbers like coordinates, a point in 2D space, a point in 3D space, or a point in 4D space if you want. But what you can do is you can say like, okay, I have a property X, that I have a property Y, that makes sense. There's one for uh, reading and one for writing. So there's a, uh, let's see, this is the getter. This is, it's backed by an array. So the X getter will get the zeroth value of the array. The Y getter will return the first value of the array. But then if you say like, if this, if this happens to be a vector that contains three values, I can also define a Z property. But I have this static if condition here, so that the property isn't even defined if this happens to be a, a two-dimensional vector. So uh, yeah, that is just a, a neat little feature that uh, is, and it's, it's, it's done in a way that is much easier to do in D than in C++. Uh, all right, well, that's probably enough about programming. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see how our planet is doing. Huh? Okay, so <laughs> so the albedo, so so the game, the game, the idea of the game is based on on um, there's this scientific model. It's called um, Daisy World, and it's like imagine a planet. That is that is cold and is populated only by white and black daisies. So that's why it's daisy world. And so these daisies, um, there's, there's basically two species: one that's black and it absorbs the incoming uh, sunlight, um, but it's it's very sensitive uh, to heat. And then there is there are white daisies that reflect all the incoming sun, sunlight, and they're very sensitive to cold. And what you get then in this mathematical model is that you get a balance between the two species because if uh, the, if 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 it's too cold, then the black uh, daisies will grow stronger, or they, they will grow more of them, increasing the temperature, and then they will die off, and then their space is taken up by the white daisies, and you will end up with a nice balance between the two. So basically, I tried to put that idea in this game as well, that uh, the species you introduce have a different albedo, which then either absorbs or reduces uh, the sunlight, absorbs or reflects the sunlight. So after a while, the temperature, the albedo goes down, the temperature goes up, and then you can start introducing other species, like uh, maybe this, this guy needs 235, but the minimum temperature is already but the highest temperature is already 251, so I can introduce him here in this desert, maybe. There you go. I should also try to introduce some of these. So they have also different properties in whether they uh, are uh, like photosynthesizing species, increasing oxygen, or if they're animal species, which require oxygen. Put this, this one also here. Let's see. Yeah. And then I'm gonna put this one is, uh, over here. This is okay. Yeah, there you go. All right. So I'm gonna come back again to this later. You can see, like, it's an influence game, right? All right, I'm just going to show you a bit more about the, the site. So, uh, I, I found this back. So I've been doing these game jams since 2001. This was the very first one I participated in. This was the first I participated in and the first I organized was, was a little bit afterwards. Um, January 2001, that's 20 years ago. Can you believe that? That's, uh, that's, that's, that's when I got hooked on the whole idea. So the Allegro community was much more active back then and they had like, uh, they organized these events twice a year. And I started organizing them as well. Um, and I, so this, this event was called Speed Hack. I mean, they didn't, uh, the word game jam, I guess, wasn't uh, common in common use back then, but the, the, the term we always used was Speed Hack. And so this was the official Allegro Speed Hack. Speedhack.allegro.cc. So, and I thought I want to contribute, but I want to organize my own event. So I called it TINS. And TINS stands for TINS is not Speedhack. It's a recursive acronym. 
very very Linuxy, very Unixy. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> this is yeah. That, that was like the the hype back then, right? Like yeah. New new is not Unix, and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um. The, the only thing that would have made it more nerdy was if you had like a silent G in there as well somewhere. That would be perfect. <laughs> like gnome and new and yeah. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it is quite nerdy. Yes, that's that's definitely true. Um, so I've 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 like the first one is 2003. So and you can see here the I've made this page recently. You can see the entries that uh, that we got back then. So then we got like 15 submissions. Um, this one is even more successful. This one, like 26. If I count quickly, 2006. 2007, 2008, and then 2010, so I skipped a year, skipped another year, and it's, it's dying off, right? Eight in 2016, starting the experiment with the rules. And thanks to the lockdown, I organized one in 2020, and we've got 13 submissions again, so that's better. And then uh, we did Krampus hack. Uh, 11 submissions, which is quite nice. So it's it's sort of like it, when it's 20 years ago, it was very active, and 10 years ago, it almost died out, and now it's it's coming back again. It's like a corona induced uh, uh, revival of the Allegro community. Which I think did you, Martijn, did you, did you also see um, uh, any changes because of uh, Factorio? Because that's made using Allegro, isn't it? Um, that's, that's yes, like exactly. A sudden hit that uses the Allegro engine. Yeah, but I think um, so. Um, so I know that Factorio is, is is was originally made with Allegro, but I think they've kind of wrote it out because they mm. it didn't cause and they used an older version of Allegro. They didn't. So the, the community there was a Allegro four. Is, is nowadays is too old to make anything with. Allegro 5 is, is can still be made for modern games. Um, but Factorio was made with Allegro 4 and they didn't make the transition to Allegro 5. Instead, they transited transit to something else, their own thing. I mean, at, at that, they're starting to become big and they started to be able to redo it in their own vision. So I don't, I don't think we've, the Allegro community has received an influx of interest uh, because of that. But you still see new people join the community once in a while. So, like, just, yeah, so I don't know. There's still a certain appeal to making your own engine because they, basically that's what it's, what it, what it is, right? You're um, instead of relying on an off, on an off-the-shelf engine, if you have curiosity about how such a thing is developed, how it works, how the internals work, uh, then eventually you'll start making your own and then you start looking for a toolkit that helps you with that or, or maybe just a, a, a community that has the same interest. And that's, yeah. that's, I think, what the appeal is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I want to say a little bit about the future. Because um, the um, uh, so so twenty twenty happened. I'm I'm going to organize Tins twenty twenty one. I already promised that to everybody, and um, there were some people that were like, uh, we got now. Uh, uh, they, they they said they they asked how they could support. So I was like, okay, well, um, if you want to donate some money, then maybe I'll award some prizes next time. And I didn't think much of this, but. Um, but well, opening up a, a donation link uh, for uh, the PayPal is not that, that much work, so I did that anyway. And now I got like uh, more than 200 euros of, uh, of donations. And so now I have to come up with some cool prizes to hand out for the next uh, competition. Uh, and uh, I have some ideas, but I'm also very interested in, in suggestions. So uh, I don't know, do you have any ideas? <laughs> Can give everybody free t shirt that that, uh, that that wins, for example. I could give like out the, to the top four, maybe. Well, let's see. 
give give it give us some moments like a nerdy program yeah 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 exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah so so um well i'll have to think about it it's gonna be this summer and i wanted to point out finally that um there's this mailing list i call it but it's a google group um, and so if you are interested in joining and winning a prize because there are going to be prizes then uh, you can and again it's allegro community but not it, it's like i say like if you have an interest in 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 in, 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 in programming uh, then it might be interesting to join uh, even if uh, if you're not uh, a big allegro nerd Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, let's let's go back to the game. Yeah, let's. I was just about to say, can we see your planet before we run out of Zoom time? Oh, look at that. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> so they've been spreading quite well. You can see that clearly some species don't like this gray area here. It's too cold, and there's like they dislike it. So uh, let's see. I can. Temperature has risen to two fifty-five. This guy requires 250, so I can put in. I can put him probably on this mountain top right here. It's like the description is. Um, oh, it's a cow that says moo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but this is. Um, it's probably a herbivore. It's not actually explicit here. And so then you can see things like. Uh, so, so, so one big change compared to the original of uh, Ludendera 46 is that I've made them, s made the species talk to you and explain to you uh, what, um, how they're doing, and that has has made a, a dramatic um, improvement in, in 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 usability. Because, you, okay, so if I click here, for example, I can see like, okay. Uh, this mushroom type thing is saying this is a bad bi biotop and now you you know why it's not growing there or probably up here yeah they complain that it's too cold because it's near the pole pole of the and so this has helped a lot in making this game a little bit more approachable because it is very complicated and confusing i know that it's uh making this understandable is a lot of work but this 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 helped a bit and um so i can probably like I, if I put this uh, red monster in a place that it likes here, but it will say that it's too cold. And so then you know why it's dying, basically. Uh, yeah, this, so in the, near the equator, it's already starting to become too hot for the, the, the first species that we introduced, the, the, the plant, plant zero, I think. Yeah, name plant zero. Should come up with better names, I guess. All right. I mean, if you want, I can leave this running for quite some more time. <laughs> but yeah, uh, do it, do it. But we do have to go back to Discord because we've got less than a minute on okay. uh, on this. So team. so so let's let's say goodbye to the. I don't know whoever is going to watch this in the future. Let, let's say a Zoom goodbye and then and then do a Discord hello. <laughs> okay. Excellent. All right. <laughs> Bye then.